Hello everyone, here is our illusion. Welcome back to WebGPU Fundamental Tutorial. In the last eight tutorials, I believe that everyone has a technical frame of WebGPU and the basic rendering pipelines. The API is not difficult, but when we introduce the computer graphics, it's getting more complicated. And today we'll learn the last part of the WebGPU compute pipeline. And before that, we need to introduce the parallel computing. Generally, calculation can be roughly divided into three types. The first one is serial computing. This is the most general way to calculate. And the tasks are in a sequence. There is a very close logical relationship between the front and the later tasks. Usually, the data or the results from the former task will be required. Otherwise, it cannot be precise. It is a single thread execution in order. And there is another type is multiple thread. As sometimes we need to run multiple tasks at the same time. And each task is relatively independent. And they could start or end at the same time. And we call this computation type as multi-threading. For this multi-thread mode, there is a special form. The task can be splitted into different subtasks. And the logic is the same for each task. So this model can satisfy the simultaneous calculation of multiple subtasks, and we call it parallel computing. The biggest difference between it and the ordinary multi-threaded computing is the request parent task or data must be able to be splitted equally. And subtasks are independent of each other. All right, these are the three types of computing. And now let's look into why we need to use GPU addition to the CPU. Actually, the main optimization direction of the CPU is still based on single thread serial computing. And the multi-threaded mode of CPU is generally assign and manage complex tasks. Usually each thread runs a different task. So most general CPUs has a dozen cores, and some top CPUs can be a capability of up to 128 multi-threads. Well, GPU is different. It is built for parallel computing from the beginning. Usually all the cores will run the task together and then run the next one when this one down. And the optimization will be the numbers of cores. But it don't need to worry about the complex tags and multitasking management. And most general GPU can meet the needs of thousands of parallel computing. And maybe some CPUs can run tens of thousands parallel modules at the same time. But because of the parallel nature of GPU, it can be easily extended. Although the performance of GPU is powerful, but because the framework itself is difficult to carry out complex serial task logic. So we still need CPU to do the logical allocation and task management. And now let's review the steps in rendering pipeline. The entire rendering pipeline is a serial, and there is a strict order in it. So this part is controlled by the CPU. They open the logic of vertex shader and fragment shader to allow users to write their own shaders. And other steps are done by the system. But every step in between is a typical parallel computing. We learned this draw method. It will open a number of threads, which is equal to the number of vertices multiplied by the instance number. And if we need to render in n pixels, and the graphics API will start n threads again for us to run the fragment shader. And then we'll do the in-depth testing. So the rendering pipeline, it takes the advantage of the hardware features of GPU. Execute a set of process in parallel. And with the development of computer science, people's requirement for the computation, complexity and performance is getting higher and higher. So some typical parallel computing scenarios like big data processing and if we do this simply by CPU, it's going to be very difficult. So how can we take the advantage of parallel compatibility of the GPU to meet up this requirement? So there are many major GPU computing frameworks on the native side. 
But for the website, the previous WebGL or OpenGL framework doesn't use the GPU very well. So for the general purpose computing, the traditional rendering pipeline will be used to simulate the computation data. So we put the logic into the vertex shader or simulate it in the fragment shader. This simulation has a lot of limitations. And rendering pipeline will require extra graphics assembly, depth testing, and rasterization steps. It will waste CPU and GPU performance to share the data between pipelines. And generally, we need to use the texture to operate global synchronization state management. And it's a lack of flexible memory sharing. So the most important feature in WebGPU is to open the computer pipeline in the modern graphics API. It enables web developers to do the general programming on GPU directly. Compute pipeline is quite simple. It just exposes the parallel compatibility of GPU. We only need to focus on two points. One, what is the data? Two, how to deal with this? We are free to arrange the logic of data processing, the flow of data processing, and how many threads to use the parallel processing, and how many compute shaders, and what's their orders. And in this tutorial, we will start a brief introduction about the concept of parallel programming of GPU. And in the next video, we are going to learn some specific methods. The rendering pipeline we learned earlier has a fixed format and process. So in a certain extent, it weakened the logic of writing parallel computing. In the computer pipeline, we just need to think about the processing logic and the processing flow. Although the API is very simple, but the inherent logic is much more complicated. Let's start with some basic examples. For example, we want to add one to a set of numbers. Basically, in CPU, we just run a for loop and then add one for each number. This is the most common way. But if thinking the sequence is very large, we just do this in a single thread and the time consuming will be greatly increased. We may not meet the needs of real time rendering. So how to do this using multi threading or parallel computing? Some people may think we can split the data into n parts and then do the plus one operation at the same time. Firstly, we need to define a function and then start the multi strides to run this function at the same time. But the parameters passed through the thread are different. For example, the index of each thread it corresponds to the position of the array. And according to the index, we can do the plus one operation on different positions at the same time. Of course, we require data could be divided equally and not affect each other. Ideally, we can start 100 threads to run. But in fact, the resources of system cannot be infinite. We can also adjust the number of threads manually. We can set only 10 threads to run the function and then run in 10 units. And the system will be based on the status of GPU to schedule the operation of 10 groups. If GPU is free, then we can run multiple groups together. If the resources is not enough, then we can run this in line. And the worst case is going to be a serial execution. But in this case, we can think of them as a hundred independent threads. But only during the actual execution, it might start at a different time. But also, the units is not infinite either. For example, the maximum number of threads and groups are 10. But we have to process a thousand numbers. What should we do? There are two ways of thinking. The first approach is simpler. We can use the logic of CPU to add a for loop. That is, we do the serial circle for 10 times. The advantage of this is we don't have to change the logic. The disadvantage is that it depends on GPU to execute for the full loop. Essentially, a GPU program can execute many times in series, but every time we have to wait for the last one to finish. Besides, it requires both CPU and GPU for frequent communication, and it is not recommended. In the second approach, we can keep the number of threads for the GPU, and we just need to change the group data granularity. We split data into 100 groups.
and the granularity of data changes from 1 to 10. And then we'll perform a circle of 10 additions. This will reduce the communication between CPU and GPU. And it's the least the better. But its the disadvantage is in that parallel logic serial algorithm, programming difficulty will be increased. The first method of CPU loop execution it is a serial process. Second approach is a union process embedded with the serial calculation and parallel calculation. From this example, we can tell that parallel computing is much more complicated than the traditional serial computing. Another example, if we would like to sum a series of numbers, how to do that? Single threading approach is very simple, same as before, just add a for loop. But how about parallel computing? Can we do the same thing as uh, plus one? And just add a sum into each thread directly? Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Because this operation is not a thread safe operation. That is to say, multiple threads can read and write data at the same time. There will be data conflicts. If two threads read and write on different address in memory, but it's okay. This two will not affect. It's also okay when two threads reading the same address. But if one can read and write uh, at the same time, then there will be conflicts. Because the time and the order of execution of thread operations is not guaranteed. For example, for this statement, sum plus equals to operation. First, read the original value of sum and put it in a cache. And then perform the a plus 1 operation on this value, and then write a new value back to the memory. Because the read and write order cannot be guaranteed in multiple threads. So the following case will happen. a, b, two threads read and the value of sum at the same time as 1, and then add 1 to each cache, the result will be 2. And then write it back into the original memory of sum, the final sum will be equal to 2, not 3, that we wanted. So in multiple thread, we need to pay attention to this. And this will greatly increase parallel programming difficulty. So how to resolve this data conflict problem? One typical method is thread lock. So when the thread is operating, we set a state first to make other threads wait in line. And then we can cancel the state lock when the first thread ends, and then the second thread can do this. Locate one processing and unlocate one finish. It's a very complicated mechanism, but WebGPU programming API provides us this method. We can directly use the Atomic Eye API to do this. This will automatically help us to deal with the method that we said log and wait. And if at the same time n processes performed atomic uh, like accumulation operations, and the system will automatically schedule the operation record, so there will be no data conflict. Although it's very convenient, but it has required the operator data types. For example, it must be an integer. If it is a decimal or other type, it cannot be operated and developers need to convert their own data. Secondly, it degrades the performance of parallel computing because each thread is operating in memory need to wait online. Although it may be faster than the serial processing, but it will be slower than the fully parallel computing. So we generally recommend to avoid this situation about simultaneous reading and writing. And the second approach to resolve this issue is going to be independent logic. We can split the original data source into n groups for processing. For example, we divide 100 numbers into 10 groups. And we create an array of length 10 to store the results for each group. In each group, we need to calculate the sum of 10 numbers and then store the result in the corresponding sum array. This avoids the conflict of writing to a buffer at the same time. But the problem of this approach is that the sum is not really the end result we want. We need an accumulator number by adding these 10 numbers together. If it is a single thread operation, then 
people may immediately think we can sum this again recursively. But how about the parallel threads on GPU? Actually, it is difficult for the GPU to complete this recursive operation independently. Its frame structure de determines that it is difficult to manage the several processes by GPU itself. So we still need CPU to do the final calculation. We could transfer the data back to CPU and complete the final accumulation work. GPU helped us to turn the big data into a small data, and the last step is going to be very quick for CPU to do it. So what if the amount of data is still very large after GPU calculating? At this time, developers need to arrange multiple pipelines in the CPU to process the data. It's equivalent to the process of recursion. For example, we can divide a thousand numbers into 10 groups first, and then process into a hundred numbers. And then we put this result put into the second computer shader, and then do the mathematical again. In the end, we get 10 numbers and pass back into the JavaScript to make the final accumulation precise. The whole parallel logic and serial logic should be intersected, and our algorithm is going to be very complex. So some scenarios and algorithms make the GPU parallel processing not possible, such as the common sorting algorithm. So how to use the GPU to handle this problems in parallel? Actually, those classic sorting algorithms is not possible to use parallel computing because it is a very typical strong correlation between the previous and the later data. It's very difficult to separate the data independently. So it's a completely different processing logic for GPU to do so. Okay, let's move on. So how fast is GPU parallel computing? Let's test the computing performance of WebGPU using a simple and practical example. We introduced a lot of demos before, and an essential part is to compute MVP matrix. It is kind of a complicated calculation in the no ordinary 3D scene. And each operation requires at least 64 multiplications and 64 additions. So for a complex 3D scene, if every object needs to calculate local matrix, world matrix, and MVP matrix, then the time expense cannot be ignored. If we only use CPU to do the calculation, especially single-threaded JavaScript to calculate this, then the time will be very obvious. In WebGL time, the more common practice is to combine model view and camera, and then pass them into the vertex shader to calculate MVP matrix. And we need to use the parallel compatibility of GPU to calculate MVP. But the vertex shader of the rendering pipeline is based on the number of vertices. That is to say, multiple vertices of an object, in fact, it will be repeated many times to calculate MVP. It will cause a certain waste of performance. So firstly, let's try to use a computer shader to uh, calculate the MVP separately. And we can see that it takes about 40 milliseconds to get a million dynamic object rendering. And it's only the time for GPU to calculate MVP without considering GPU rendering. At this point, the frame rate has dropped below 25 frames, and it definitely can't meet the performance of the real-time rendering. On the contrast, the parallel computing with GPU is probably take less than 10 milliseconds. As my laptop doesn't have a separate GPU, and it's a very old one, so uh, it cannot reflect a computing advantage of GPU. The speed could be increased by 10 times or dozens of times. Welcome to leave your test results. And next video, we are going to introduce the Compute Pipeline API. Welcome to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.